Hey guys, it's Pronogo here, bringing you another tutorial video for Brood War. This one is going to show you how to modify button set data on uh, either Remastered or 116.1. Uh, the tools you're going to need for this are FireGraph to actually modify the button sets, and uh, PyMS, Python Modding Suite, and that will be used to extract the FireGraph FGP file if you are working with Remastered. If not, then you don't really need that, but you should get that anyways because it's pretty general purpose. And uh, other than that, yeah, you just need some mace. So grab those from the links in the description if you don't have them already. So first things first, we are going to make a FireGraph executable. This is a necessary step for anything, uh, either 161 or StarCraft Remastered. Regardless of what you end up doing, you're going to need uh, FireGraph for this. So just pop it open and uh, make sure that you check out the options menu. By default, it shows you a splash screen. You can go into the options menu and disable that. You can modify a, a bunch of different settings and such. Um, you know, make it use your own uh, stat.txt file or something like that. You know, you can do all sorts of different stuff. Um, just tool around with that if you feel like it. Specifically, make sure you take off that splash screen thing because you need to press spacebar or some other key in order to uh, actually get past it. Uh, every single time you start it up, it gets kind of annoying. So uh, just hold Control and hit N, or just go to File New, and that will create a. Uh, it'll start loading a new uh, EXE file. We can go ahead and immediately save it, and we're going to save it as. Uh, well, I was going to save it as mod, uh, but I missed the M key. Um, for when you're saving, just make sure that, uh, you know, it, this prompts you if uh, to add in an archive, an MPQ archive. So if you end up doing this, uh, basically if you have an MPQ file with modified data, you can add it by hitting yes and just selecting uh, an MPQ or another executable file that doesn't have FireGraph changes in it. And uh, then it'll save its FireGraph specific changes, which are things like the button sets. Um, so just so you know for future reference if you end up uh, needing that. Other than that, uh, FireGraph here, it says asking us if we want to use a custom icon. We don't. Um, so you can use like an, I think an ICO file if you want a custom icon for your mod. Uh, I didn't really have any luck getting it to work personally, but I'm pretty sure it does. At any rate, uh, let's get into what FireGraph actually does. Here it has five different fields. The units field just controls uh, what kind of information is shown in the uh, information pane below the wireframe and health bar and stuff like that. So what icons show up, you can see here it's normal unit. If we went to uh, a building, if we scroll down far enough, you can see it says building um, in, that, uh, in this status presets box. And then it also controls the button set that's actually connected. Uh, you don't really have to worry about any of the other fields, just the status preset and the button set field. Those are the only two fields you have to worry about. Uh, so that's what the units tab really governs. Um, so if you were to basically make a new button set entirely in the next tab, which controls the button sets, the icons that show up on the command card, um, that would allow you to, uh, you know, say you made a new one for the Broodling that gave it uh, Storm or something crazy because you're Necron. Well, you could actually select that new button set in this button set uh, drop down bar. It would show up at the bottom. Uh, but since we're not doing that, we don't really have to worry about that. Now on to button sets. Uh, button sets, as you can see, there's like stuff for replays, there's stuff for all the different heroes and all the different units. Um, these just govern exactly what they say on the tin, what, you, what you'd think. You know, it's just a matter of um, showing the icons that allow the player to interact with the unit, issue it orders, whatever else. And uh, notably, the AI does not require these button sets. So if you had a unit that had an attack and could move, you wouldn't actually need uh, that unit to have any button set at all. Uh, as long as the data was there for the game to move it, the AI would be able to move it around. Um, so just a neat little trick in case you happen to be making stuff for AI or something you don't actually need uh, to add in the uh, button. For example, if you wanted to do something like a gateway that builds a hero zealot in addition to a regular zealot, but only the AI have access to that, uh, you could not add the button set or the, the hero zealot button to the gateway, and then the player wouldn't be able to build it, but the AI would be able to build it. Stuff like that you can mess around with. Then we have dat requirements. This is uh, where we go to actually change what can and cannot be trained, uh, what upgrades can be grabbed, and by which units. Um, you know, tech orders, etc. 
EXE edits and plugins are only for 116.1. EXE edits modify specific memory addresses to change uh, core gameplay behavior and stu uh, engine functionality, uh, so stuff like that. I might be getting the technical terms wrong, but the uh, basically I'm keeping it very vague because it's not necessary for our tutorial and it's sort of high end. I mean, you can take a look at this stuff. Usually it's pretty self-explanatory actually, but uh, you probably won't need to bother with most of this stuff. And again, it's only 116.1, so remastered developers need not take a look at this. Uh, the memory addresses are different on the latest patch, which is why they no longer work. And then plugins, I mean, you just add plugins to uh, your 161 EXE. If you're trying to use plugins for uh, remastered, then they have to be specifically tailored for them and they have to be loaded through a different method. I'll go over that in another video. So uh, let's go back to, uh, now that we've done the overview and we figured out exactly what Firegraft has to offer us, uh, let's talk about what we actually need to do to uh, for our experiment. We're going to put the Marine button on the command center command card, and we are going to allow the command center to build a marine, to train a marine. So to do this, we're going to find the command card in this list and click this arrow here next to its button set entry, and that will jump us over to the next tab, sort of like a PyDat or Dat Edit. If you've ever played with, around with those, they sort of have references. You can just jump around. It's pretty useful. Uh, here we have uh, its eight, ID 81. You can also just, I mean, find it in the, in the ID list. Uh, oh, it might be in tree actually by default. I, I forgot about this. Um, I use ID sorting. You can use tree sorting if it looks better to you. You can also use alphabetical. It's it's really up to you, whatever you want to do. And you can also rename these. So if you're doing a mod, and for example, you're renaming the command center to command base, you could do control R or right click and rename and then change it to command base. I'm not going to do that, but just to show you that you could, and that will help you keep track of what everything is. For example, for uh, Project Hydra and Project Nemesis, I've done this for my own uh, benefit in the upgrade section for the unused, uh, unknown upgrades here. I've actually gone in and changed them to the names of the new upgrades that I've added in so that I can better keep track of what stuff is going on. And uh, that helps me remember where, where everything is in the, uh, in the list and not have to go looking for references to what numbers mean what. So that's pretty useful. Um, anyways, now let's uh, dissect this, uh, all this information here. You've got the button list. And as you can see, we're currently on the move entry. And what it's doing is it's showing us the buttons that show up normally when the command center is lifted off, minus the uh, add-ons. And the reason for this is because the condition over here on this button is building can move and has lifted off. So we're only seeing buttons that show up when you have the structure lifted off. If we click on the SCV function, we'll see the normal command card with the SCV, the add-ons, you know, and, and again, this is only when you have, um, you know, can create unit building as the condition. Now, if it's training, uh, you know, then you'll see this cancel icon, which uh, normally is re replaced by the lift off icon because it, in order to lift off, right, if we click on lift off, it has to be building as landed, but they also can't have any unit uh, in the queue. Or maybe they can, but Blizzard just specifically put the cancel icon here to prevent people from being able to do that. I'm not quite sure. But uh, either way, pretty sure it has to be... Um, you know, completely empty in terms of its queue in order to lift off. And it certainly it cannot lift off during uh, the construction of add-ons, which is why you've got two different cancel buttons here. So basically what I'm getting at is these conditions govern a bunch of different things. If you're familiar with triggers, which you sh I assume you are, the uh, basic, you know, truth of triggers is that you your conditions have to be true for your triggers to fire. And the condition in this case is, you know, if we have the SEV, they, they just have to be able to create the unit, and that is determined by its stat requirements. So crucially, uh, if we were to be, uh, add the marine icon like we're going to, but we didn't mess with the data requirements here and allow the command center in uh, debt requirements to train marines, that would be pretty bad for us because then this condition here, can create unit building, would not actually be true. So that's why we need to modify both fields. Now, uh, the other visual properties, we'll go through the whole list here. You know, it has the preview here. It has the string preview, and you can also toggle between disabled and enabled. Um, I'll get to that in a moment. Visual properties are that the position of where it is, it's one to nine and a tic-tac-toe grid. So it's one, two, three, and then the second line is four, five, six, and then the final one is uh, seven, eight, nine. Then uh, the icon ID, in this case, it's seven. If we were to scroll up, it would be blank. If we were to scroll down, it would be a wraith. Um, typically, these icons match up with the IDs of the units as well. So you have condition variable to create an SCV. And, uh, you know, if we changed it to eight, it would be Wraith, just like the icon ID for Wraith is eight. So stuff like that. Um, so the unit IDs and the icon IDs are usually synced up in some respect. Then we have strings. And these this has two subsets, one for disabled, which is when you don't meet the data requirements for it, such as uh, 
you know, if we were to try to make a commsat, but we needed an academy, it would be showing us this. And this is how you preview the disabled ones. You just click that. And then uh, you click enabled to preview the what it's like when you have the academy and so on and so forth. And then enabled is just what it says when uh, it's asking you to actually build the unit. Like if, if you mouse over it and you see the string, it says build SCV. Okay, well, I know I can build the SCV because I have the, the tech requirements for it, which happen to be nothing. <laughs> there are no tech requirements as long as it's a command center. Now, in settings, we have conditions and actions, and each one of these can have variables. So you'll notice that for can create unit building, the, uh, you know, the condition has to be true for it to be able to create the unit. Um, and then, you know, you select SCV to spe uh, specify what unit or building is being created by the action. And uh, you could desync these. So, uh, for example, we could set this uh, action variable to Wraith, but the condition variable stays at SCV. And the cost would probably change to be Wraith, but the, uh, the fact of the matter is we would be able to make Wraiths from our command centers if we so desired. Um, but we want to keep the SCVs intact, obviously, because we want to be able to make more workers. So that is uh, basically how those work. If you look at, uh, you know, rally point, you'll notice that there are no condition or action variables. They're set to zero. They're blank. Uh, that's because the condition is just that the structure can set a rally point, and the action is to set a rally point. So this is an instance where there are no condition variables. There's not, like, a different kind of rally point or something, uh, like there is in, say, StarCraft Two, where there's a worker rally point and a, a military rally point. You know, you, you won't really see that in StarCraft 1. Uh, the same thing is true for here. If the building is landed, there's no condition variable for it being, like, half landed or something. So it's just landed or lifted off. It's a very binary situation. And then the action is to lift off, and there's no not multiple kinds of lifting off, so there's no action variable there. Which is why you'll see stuff like, uh, you know, can create building here. It's a nuclear silo. Again, this is a, a create add-on instead of create, uh, create unit. So there's all sorts of different stuff like that. Uh, to keep in mind, but it's it's much more simple than maybe you would have initially expected if you're coming to look at this screen for the first time. Uh, down here, you'll also see what units are using this. If we, we click on like Science Vessel Heroes, for example, you'll see that there's multiple unit entries. You can actually have more than one unit use the same command card. Uh, plenty of units use the same command card. If we found uh, basic attackers in this list, uh, let's say attacking buildings is a good example. There's four there, but basic borrower, there's... Uh, three and then group borrower. I don't know. I think that's uh, for maybe the heroes or something. I'm not quite sure what that is. And then uh, I'm trying to find basic attackers. I guess we can, do oh, basic commands actually. That's what it's called. And you'll see that there's a lot of units that use this. So there you have it. Uh, let's go back to our command center, which is 81. And uh, under normal circumstances, if I was trying to quickly make a button, um, I would just copy paste the Marine button, but I'll show you how to do it if you're unfamiliar, since presumably you are. Uh, we can just go ahead and hit click this add button and come down to train unit and then we'll just select the marine from this list hit okay and then we'll ask you what position you want it to be in well just whatever looks nice to you i'm going to put it at two so it's right next to the scv icon and then it's auto failed the condition the condition variable the action and the action variable you'll notice it also auto filled the icon i think by default it actually sets that up you know we can test this real quick if we set it to a uh, tank turret and set it to four. No, it actually does. It uh, autofills the correct icon as well. That's neat. I didn't know that. So you can also, you can just right click here and remove if you're not familiar with that. You can right click and add or copy and paste as new, stuff like that. So, um, you know, we'll get into that in a moment as well. But the Marine, you know, it, it does have the icon, but the only thing that it doesn't have here is it doesn't have the proper string attached to it. So we need to go and reference the barracks Marine icon, which is ID 85, the barracks that is and find the string ID for when Marines are enabled. And if uh, it was a Firebat as well, then we would have to find the uh, disabled string, you know, something like that. Like if you made a, a, if you were modifying strings and you made it so that Marines needed to have a, a, a barracks to be able to be built, uh, then, you know, we would have to mod a new string in using a different program. But since we don't have to do that, we can just grab uh, the ID, which is 586, type it in here. And now you'll see it, it says train Marine instead of a different string. So now we've got our button. We're almost there. We're actually most of the way through. That was most of it. Let's hop over to dat requirements. We're already in units, but uh, you can see where you would go if you wanted to make uh, different buildings or units for that matter, uh, research tech or uh, requisition upgrades, or if you wanted to have different units use tech or use orders that they normally don't. Um, we're just going to stick to creating units now, which is in the units tab. 
and uh, we'll go over the requirements here. We're already on the Marine by default. If you've never come into this area, this is what it's going to look like. Uh, requirements, current unit is barracks, is not constructing add-on, is not lifted off. What does this all mean? So there's a list of requirements, and much like my trigger talk from earlier, your list of requirements all have to be true. So every one of these uh, these conditionals here have to be true in order for the structure or whatever unit has to is uh, being governed in order for them to be able to build the marine. So the, the unit has to be, according to this first block, a barracks, and the unit can't be building an add-on, and the unit can't be lifted off. That Those are the only requirements. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add three new entries and fill them in. And uh, you can do this by right-clicking and hitting Add Item, or as I like to do, just Control-Insert three times. And there are two kinds of requirements. There's opcodes, which are things like current unit is, is not constructing add-on, is not lifted off. And then there are uh, parameters, which are references to the units. So opcodes are more like a conventional trigger system. And parameters are more like a comparison to a certain unit. So the current unit is, and then it compares, is the unit ID exactly the same as the barracks ID? And uh, since we need it to also compare for co command centers, we're going to add an exception for that. So we're going to set this opcode to or. You can modify that by the drop-down menu here. We're going to set this to current unit is. And we're going to go to parameters here and find command centers. You can. I'm just going to find it by uh, pressing C a lot. So I think it's like the third or fourth one. And uh, now we've got our exception for command centers. We can also move this up and down with these buttons. Uh, sometimes, you, because Firegraphs is a little buggy and it's an old program and needs to be updated, but nobody's doing that yet, um, sometimes you won't actually be able to remove items by holding control and hitting delete or right-clicking and hitting remove item. I don't really know why this is. I think some of the fields are just not working correctly. But uh, nonetheless, we don't need to remove items because we're adding stuff for a purpose. So now we can just go ahead and save our changes, hit no, hit no, and uh, go ahead and close Firegraph. That's it for Firegraph. We don't need to open that up again. Uh, we've done all of the changes we need to do. Now, if you are working with 116.1, that is all you needed to do. Um, you know, your Firegraph DXE will be your new mod EXE. You can use uh, pop open pi mpq, and we can go ahead and open our odd.exe, and we can add files to it. You know, I can add my scripts files, I can add my data files, whatever the case may be. Now, if you're working with remastered, you still want to open up your file, uh, your your exe file in pi mpq, and you want to select the FGP file, which will be the name of the mod .fgp. And you are going to go ahead and hit Extract Files. You're going to uh, extract it to anywhere. Um, and it'll create a Firegraph folder wherever you extracted it to. Now, if you remember my previous tutorial, which is about packing remastered executables with Samace, uh, that is going to come in handy. We're going to create a folder called Mod. And we're going to put our Firegraph folder in that file, or in that folder, rather. And then we're going to pop open some ace with command prompt. And we are going to get the file path of this. And we're going to pack that exe. Uh, yep. And then pack. OK, that should do it. And uh, I'm not going to go over this again because obviously I already made a whole tutorial on packing stuff with some ace, but that's just the process there in case you're not familiar. Um, and then that has created a remastered executable file. We're going to go ahead and start this up, and this will show off the changes. Uh, so, you know, once the anime stops showing up on my screen, we're going to go ahead and play a melee map as Terran. That should show up the changes here. We can make a marine. We can do an OP marine rush, kill the AI with our marine that we built from minute one. Makes turns even more broken than they currently are. Please nerf. So now we have our changes. It works in remastered. We can pretend that this is uh, 116.1 with the OG graphics. Unfortunately, it is not, and it will never be a superior. Uh, it is it, the inferior cousin. But there you go. That's, uh, you know, it's a walk and talk in marine. So there you, I mean, doesn't get any more real than that, right, guys? So that's how you do it. Uh, you can do the same thing for stuff like uh, if you wanted the Marine to cast, uh, say, uh, Consume. 
and you, you know you gave it energy or i guess consume probably doesn't need energy um you know you know you could add that as well there's all sorts of different things you can add you can play around with this as you see fit and uh, let me know what you end up making with it let me know if you have any problems and i will be here making additional videos in the future so stay subbed and i will see you next time